Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan, who is a corgi. He's sleeping on the wraps we're using today. And this is episode 51 of Conversations with a Corgi. We're starting a bit late today for a variety of reasons, the most exciting of which is that, oh, the sun is out. <laughs> and it was very bright over here in the corner of the kitchen, so I had to do some fast curtains and I still have a need for more because Tristan is just a little ray of sunshine over here, which he is anyway. But it's very sunny for the first time in weeks. Weeks, I can't believe it. The head bobbing corgis are going, the head bobbing queen is waving, and that's always a sign that it's gonna be a good day. Of course, tomorrow we're having uh, a big rainstorm coming in from the west, so um, not gonna be sunny then, but it's, and it's cold. The good news is also that it's been around 32 degrees at night, and it's gonna to continue to do that for a week. Now this won't kill the ticks, but it will certainly make them a little more sparse. So that's a good thing. And then the other amazing good thing that's happened for us is that my neighbor came and cut up the tree that fell down and propped my fence back up and cleared out all the debris from the yard. There's huge pieces of the trunk left that he needs to take to his brother who's going to use them to heat his house in hot water, which is wonderful when you have a tree down to allow that to happen. But boy, what a change in my yard. That tree was taking up literally half of the backyard. It is a huge tree. I have a really big yard, it's like an acre, but that tree was taking up a lot of space. So we've had all kinds of new developments and my friend Heather was here and fixed my um, closet that you come into to hang your coats in that had fallen down. Um, cheesy wire racks not put in studs in these new houses, but it's still a wonderful closet. And uh, within about 15 minutes, we had a new bar up and some really strong brackets. So now the coats are hanging up. So things are really improving. However, I've had a little problem with my shoulder. So I needed to do quite a lot of things this morning to help myself get moving before we could do our episode of Conversations with a Corgi. So we are back on track now and we are going to show you today one of my favorite wraps called the Cross Your Heart Wrap. And I think about um, my niece's dog, Mila, when I think about this wrap because she's a big shouldered dog and she's a little tight in her shoulders, mostly because she's had some ACL problems. So she's using her shoulders more to walk with than her hind end. And that's putting a strain on her shoulder. She's getting a little bit short strided in front. This wrap is also good for dogs that might be pullers on the leash or dogs that are tight in the elbows um, and just any kind of gait or balance problem. This is a good wrap. It's another one that's fairly easy for you to learn and to remember. Um, lots of these wraps are great. Like if you can only remember one, you're still going to have a lot of benefits for your dog. And of course, you can get the book about wraps from the main office right here. Where's the cover? From ttouch.com, all wrapped up for pets. And then you'll have pictures of all these wraps that you can look back to, um, to practice on your dog. And it's especially useful if you work in a shelter or someplace where you have a lot of dogs, um, or if you have a dog rescue, or if you volunteer at a dog rescue, knowing some of these wraps can be really helpful. So we'll start with Jack because he's big and leggy, and we're sort of focusing on the leg wraps today. Leggy for a Jack Russell. <laughs> and for the first one we're gonna do, the cross your heart wrap, you can use one or two wraps. He's a little fella, so we're just gonna use one wrap. And I'm gonna use the raspberry one because it happens to be ready to go. So for this wrap, you're going to start with the bandage well, tie them together if you're using um, two. And for a dog as big as Mila, she's an 85 pound pit bull ridge back mix. You may have to actually tie three together. With Jack, I just need one. So you're gonna start with a bandage over the top of the shoulders. And actually the ease of putting these on is often just knowing where to start. So I just put it over Jack's shoulders. Then we're gonna come down under the front legs going back to front cross under there because you're crossing your heart that's how it has the cross your heart name and then bring the ends up on either sides of the shoulder 
and then you can either pin them or tuck them. Because this is the perfect size, I'm going to do a bit of a bow here on the top of Jack. So you can see it's crossed under his front legs. Let's straighten that out a little bit. Don't want to give him an elbow problem. Coming from the buns to the front. And then on the side, it just goes around the front legs. And then it crosses on the top of the back. And I tied this with a little wonky looking bow here. And here's the other view. So it's the same on both sides. So that's the cross your heart wrap. And it literally is crossing this dog's heart. I had a client dog once who was a Pomeranian. Was he a Pomeranian? He, he was a little furry thing. He may, he may have been another type of dog, but he looked like a Pomeranian. And he had a weird kind of um, like congestion, like edema in his chest. And I recommended to his owner to frequently check his heart because that can be a symptom of some heart problems. And this would have been a great wrap to use on him just to bring him some awareness there, increase the circulation there, and maybe cut down on some of that edema. It would go down after I saw him, but this would have been a good wrap. So if your dog has been a leash puller in the past and now that you're using a good harness after you watch these talks, um, maybe this would be a good thing to do to help your dog's shoulders recover from the injuries sustained from pulling, pulling, pulling. If you have a dog that you pull with, a lot of people with Malamutes actually use them in pulling competitions. This is another good wrap to use just to give them some relief in their shoulders and get some symmetrical gait pattern going. So let's try this on Tristan. Come on, boy. Let's see what color wrap you want today. We have purple, green, yellow, blue, and another raspberry. Which one do you want, Biss? Pick one. This one? This one? This one? Green? No? Raspberry? Blue. All right, Tristan wants to blue wrap. Good, because we can see it easily on him. So I'm just gonna lay the wrap over his withers, pretty much in the center. And then I'm gonna come from the buns towards the front crossing the ends of the wrap on his chest and bringing them up and then just connecting them on the top to the other piece of the wrap. I don't know if I have enough to do a bow for him. He might just get a little knot. And if you have a big chested breed, you know, for instance, a French bulldog or any number of um, a regular bulldog, any of those breeds with a big chest, a basset hound, this is a good thing to do to help them improve their breathing. And certainly for the Cavaliers, this would be a good one to try. So you can see it's crossed on his little heart in the middle. There's your nose. And it's crossed on the shoulders here. And then on the back, we just have a little knot to hold this all together. This is a good one to put on your dog if you're going to be Oh, you're sliding off your pillows. If you're going to be going out on the confidence course or working him a little bit moving around, it stays on really well, especially if you connect the two pieces at the top. And it's a really good one to use for your dog to improve his gait. It's also one that you might try if your dog has had an amputation on any limb um, because it does remind them of a symmetrical gait pattern. And it actually helps you feel a little bit more confident I'm going to show you some wraps on people in the coming week and you can see yourself that when you have a wrap around your shoulders like this, it does, it kind of lifts your chest and it does make you feel more confident. It makes you feel like you have emotional and literal support. So it's also a good one to use if you have a dog that's based narrow in front, meaning his little feet stand really close together. And by the same token, as I said, the broad chested dogs can really benefit from this wrap as well. If you have two wraps on a dog Tristan's size, I'll just show you with him. We're taking this off. Do you want two blue ones? Okay. You can do a little bit different fun thing with this. Or if you have two wraps and your dog's sort of medium size, like, you know, a beagle or something. So again, you start on the withers. Back of the shoulders, cross one under on one side, 
These are so long now, Tress. And one under on the other side. Cross them on the chest. Bring them up. Cross them on the back. And now I have all this extra wrap. And one of them's pretty twisted up there, huh, Tristan? He says it still feels good. So what I can do now that I have this extra length is go ahead, especially for a dog like him or a Basset Hound, this would be like the ideal wrap for a Doxy or a Basset. You take it and just crisscross it further down their back, crossing under their tummy. All right, so you can see here, we have the cross your heart part in the front. And then what I've done is, since I had so much wrap, I ran it down the length of the whole dog. So this is gonna bring awareness to his front end when he's walking, but it's also connecting his front end to the rest of his body. I had enough to wrap this around him a couple of times, making sure I don't hit the business in the back, and then connect it on the top here in the back. And then I just Velcroed the two pieces down so you can see it's around his shoulder and then a zigzag down his back, crossing under and then connecting on the top. So this is a great one to do if you have a long dog, a corgi, a basset, a doxy, a clumber spaniel, some of the other long breeds. Or you may have a dog um, like a Doberman who's just extra long. You might need three wraps to do this on a Doberman, but you can see it's around his shoulders and then we zigzagged our way down the dog's back. So this is a really good wrap to do for a long dog. And it's just a variation on the cross your heart wrap. Really, when you have extra wrap, sometimes people just invent um, new ways to use them and they are very effective. So we'll let Tristan out of this one. <clears throat> And the next one I want to show you is a little bit similar. I wanted to show you some of the wraps for the legs because the leg wraps I find on a horse or a human particularly useful. And again, if your dog's had an amputation or if they've had a stroke or if they have some paralysis in one leg or if they're just getting old and have a tremendous amount of arthritis in one leg, this is a really good wrap to use for them on their legs. So this is called the candy cane wrap. And Jack's going to need two wraps for this because he's not that big, but there's not enough with one wrap. So I'll just connect these two raspberry ones. We could wrap him in raspberry and green and he'll be really ready for Christmas. So we can use these wraps on the dog's legs a whole lot of different ways, but this is one way that is very useful. It gives dogs an awareness of their movement when they're walking in them, and it can really help improve their posture and change postural patterns. And it's great for a dog that stands out of balance. Um, Wendy Murdoch has these wonderful cushioned pads, which I have some of, where the, and she mostly uses them with horses. I've been using them on dogs almost exclusively. I think I used it on one horse. And you just stand on this cushioned pad and it gives you feedback up through your foot about how you're standing. And you just stand on it. It's like a little balance exercise. And then you walk off of it and it changes the posture in your body. This is how I know how good they are. We were at a course clinic and you're standing in the ring for a long time, standing, walking, standing, walking, and your back gets tired and your postural habits really come into play. So Wendy had brought these over in the afternoon and a lot of the people were standing on them for a few minutes in between because they're so soft and nice and then taking a walk. And I was, as a physical therapist, really observing the changes in people's posture, their pelvic angle, and really seeing some profound effects. Wendy is a researcher. She likes to really look at things and measure them. And um, after I shared with her some of the things that I was observing, which she had observed many of as well, um, it gave her some ideas about how to study this because she likes to do detailed scientific data collecting and studies. But it was remarkable to see the changes in people and also the improvement in their gait and their relaxation after standing on these blocks. So that's a long way of saying that those blocks are even better if you can try them with like this candy cane wrap 
on your dog or your horse when you use them. And also just doing any kind of balance exercise with your dog. I like to use the candy cane wrap for that because it does just make the exercise so much more um, useful than it was without the wrap. So that would mean just taking your dog and putting his front legs on a pillow or his back legs on a pillow in your house and asking him to balance while he's wearing this wrap. So it's great for that, and of course it's good for short strided dogs, and as with all of the wraps, it really does improve a dog's confidence. So again, you're gonna start with the center of the wrap on the dog's withers, which is the top of the shoulders where Jack's spot is here. And then you're gonna come down between the front legs And this time you're not crossing them, they're staying on their own side. Then the bandage comes back up across the shoulders. Right over where your starting point was. And now I have a lot of wrap left to go down his legs. So then you take the wrap and wrap it down his legs. So I'm just like a candy cane taking this wrap down his legs. And now I actually have a little bit too much so I'll just go back up. But usually there's space between the wrap and the legs. I'll try to do it more that way on this side so you can see. You know, usually the wrap would come just once like that so you can see leg under there. But I have so much wrap I'm coming back up and around. So he's gonna look like he's got two red legs. So that's the candy cane wrap. And when I do it on Tristan, you'll see it better. He's so tiny and his legs are so short. It um, doesn't take very much wrap to go around him. So you can see all we did was start over the withers and it's like little sleeves. It actually for him right now looks a little like a bolero jacket. Came between the front legs without crossing because this is about differentiating the front legs, not connecting them the same way. They're connected over the spine. So they came up and then they crossed again on his back. And then we just candy cane them down his legs. I had to candy cane back up on him because I had so much wrap. But as you can see, we just went, you know, in a candy cane down his leg like that. So let's try that with little Tristan. Tristan, can you show me your front end? He is seeking the sun. You know how dogs are in the morning, they want to lay in the sun. Wherever it is in the house, they'll go and get their suntan. It's really how they make vitamin D. And Tristan is facing the sun. He's giving me the bun's end. Okay, up you go, honey. So we're going to start with the blue wrap on his withers. And I really need to try to get this right in the middle. And then come up between his front legs. And then we're going to cross on the top. And I have to put this a little bit snug up here in order to make it reach. Good boy, Bissy. I think you're going to have a perfect little blue candy cane on your little short legs. All right, let me see this side, Bunny. <laughs> no splits. <laughs> there's some advantages to a short dog in that you can see him all on camera and there's not much legs to wrap. So here you can see under his chest, it's not crisscross like it was. And then you can see it's wrapped down his front legs like a candy cane and then it's crossed on his shoulders where we started. Let's do this view, Biss. And then you can see from the side view how it's wrapped down his leg. Do you wanna move your feet a little bit? <laughs> and as I said, if your dog has any gait, balance, or posture problems, this is a really great wrap to use. Can you sit down, hon? 
Now with this rep in particular, it would be great if you could take your dog around a confidence course or just walk them around the house a little bit or on some different things in your driveway or even just put out, you know, like some, um, I don't know, whatever you have in your house, bowls, pillows, Pringles containers and make little cones and have your dog weave in and out around them, make some circles both ways to really let them experience how this wrap is giving feedback in their body um, and about their two front legs. And I have used this with just the wrap on one leg for some dogs. And you might want to do that if you have a dog who is, for instance, coming back from an injury and maybe one leg isn't moving as well as the other leg. You can also do this on the back end just by doing it the other way around. Um, but we have other wraps. Um, the diagonal leg wrap, which I'll show you tomorrow, is a really good one to use for back end problems. This is really good for you know, leash pullers, dogs with problems with their front ends, tightness in their shoulders, tightness in their front feet. If you've had a dog, oh, somebody had a picture on their poor dog broke his toenail off. We have all seen that happen, especially with cats. And um, you know, it's so painful for them. And as it heals and they start to move more, this might be a good wrap to use to get them reminded of the symmetry between the front legs. So your dog may have some trouble moving in this configuration when you first put it on him. If that's true, it might be too tight. So you might need to use two wraps or loosen it as much as you can or loosen it in one spot. Sometimes as you're doing these, you don't keep the tension even. Um, as a long time, lifetime horse person, I'm really used to using wraps. I used to wrap my horse's legs every day. I rode them with all the different kinds of wraps. So for me, it's not that unfamiliar to be keeping the wrap the same tension throughout. But for some people that are new to this, you may have to practice a little bit so you don't have it squeezing his knee or crushing his shoulder and bagging somewhere else. So make sure you practice it a few times and your dogs usually will enjoy it. It's a fun new game and they don't know what you're doing, but it does really improve their gait and posture and help them um, have a better um, way of moving, which, you know, part of the joy of having a dog is watching them run and play. They are so happy to move in their bodies. So when you have a dog that's had an issue, this is a great way to bring them back into their body in a way that's really helpful for them. So with large dogs, you may need a second bandage, as I said. Um, even for Jack, who wasn't that large, I used a second bandage. And um, as I said, tomorrow we will be going um, on to the diagonal leg wrap to show you a way to connect the front and the back legs. But today we have talked about the cross your heart wrap. British Corgi sitting right here waiting for a second demo where you just crossed it over his shoulders, crisscrossed under the front legs, and then brought it up and secured it on the top of the dog. He's a little short thing, so he doesn't need much, but he does have a big chest. He is the type of dog that I would want to use this on. So he crossed it, brought it up on the top, tied a little bow, and he has like what would be the shoulder parts for a little doggy backpack. So that's the cross your heart wrap that we did first. And then we did the candy cane wrap, which Tristan is over here still modeling where we came across the shoulders, one piece on each leg in the front, no crossing on the heart, back up, crossed it on the back, and then did these cute little candy cane wraps down the leg, which on him was just one candy cane. <laughs> and we're not using raspberry, so for him it's a peppermint <laughs> stick wrap. You can sit down, hon. So those are two wraps that I use, um, not as often as the original ones I showed you, but fairly often. The cross your heart wrap is super useful and super easy. I can teach it to a client in a minute and they will remember it. So it's a really good thing to use for your dog if he has any kind of issues in his posture or his gait or tension in his shoulders, or if he's been a leash puller, even if he's still a leash puller and you're working on that with some of the new harnesses I suggested, um, the cross your heart wrap is a really good one. And the candy cane wrap is good to help your dog get a symmetrical gait and to improve his balance. These are all really good things that you can do to help your dog walk better and enjoy that freedom of movement that make us love our dogs so much. And it's a super thing to use these on senior dogs. Senior dogs, like senior people, just need to remember how to move the way they used to move because something might have been aching for weeks and weeks and now it's not. 
and they have developed some kind of compromised gator posture as a result of the injury or the painful area. And the wrap can really bring back to you the remembrance of um, what your gait is when it was normal, when it was symmetrical, when it was balanced. And it goes along with that idea of, of Linda Tellington's that she has as an intention with T-Touch work, which is to remember your potential for perfection. And so the wrap is just another way to remind the body of its potential for perfection in gait and symmetry and balance. So I hope you enjoy experimenting with some of these wraps for your dog's legs and the cross your heart wrap, which is for the legs, but not on the legs. And this is Sally Morgan and Tristan Corgi for episode 51 of Conversations with a Corgi. We will be back tomorrow to talk a little bit more about wraps. I have a special thing planned for Sunday. And then uh, we'll continue next week. I will be um, at my educator job Monday and Tuesday, but I will see you on Wednesday and Thursday morning. And then I will be driving down to Maryland early Friday morning and arriving at the clinic, the Tellington T-Touch Clinic. There's still spaces if you want to come. It's May 12th to the 17th. Go to ttouch.com. You can bring your dog. You can bring your friends. There's great places to stay. And it is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to work with the amazing Linda Tellington and to be in a room full of people that feel as you do about animals. It's a really a joy and a great experience. And Tristan and I will be there and we'll be thrilled to meet you as well. So we will be doing Facebook Lives at various times in the day um, when I'm at the clinic. So some of you might catch it live, some of you might not. I'm going to try to do it in the morning before the training starts, which will be, um, the training starts around 9. And I want to talk to some of the people that are there. But I may also do a little live spot during the day if somebody's doing something really interesting with the confidence course or if Linda is telling us something incredible. Um, I will try to record that for you so that you can see that as well. So thank you for joining us today. Tristan's staying wrapped up for a little while. And we'll go out with our official Conversations with the Corgi music. Which, in fact, is an Irish piece of music that I found. <laughs> Tristan doesn't know where that flute music is coming from. He was a little nervous during the recording process. <laughs> now that it's in a phone, he's liking it a little more. This get, maybe we'll do a dog dancing routine to this. <laughs> Wearing leg wraps. <laughs> So this is Sally Morgan. Thank you for joining us, and we'll be back tomorrow, hopefully at 8.25. And um, I don't think we'll have a problem with the sunshine tomorrow. It's going to be a cloudy day with a lot of rain. We are really catching up after our drought. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>